Hey, Teddy here. So welcome to the VR Tech channel. We talked a lot about feature, we talked a lot about hardware, we talked a lot about games, but there's one thing that we didn't really touch in this period, and it's actually the software. So I figure because many of you are jumping in VR for the first time with the Oculus Quest 2, it will be great to have an overview of the software to know already how to move and what to do when you get your hardware. Finally, if you're not able to grab it yet, well, don't worry, because I'm running a giveaway down there for the 50k subscribers goal that we reached last week. So check it out in the description below, get excited, like, share and subscribe, and of course, let's enjoy together this video and the software overview of the Oculus Quest 2. Let's get into it. And all right, here we are in the Oculus Quest 2. I'm gonna go very, very fast so we can see pretty much everything happening in this headset. Uh, this is a virtual environment. By the way, there are many different virtual environments uh, that you can discover and they're gonna find them in the settings, of course, and in virtual environments. Uh, when you're gonna start, you're gonna find the bubble one. Uh, I'm gonna go through them very, very fast. I'm not a living a, really a fan of it. Uh, there's the pass-through where you can see outside with our cameras. And then we have the classic home, the, the one that we had for the original. Oculus Rift, so pretty cool, uh, a really uh, nice thing that put it here, and the Cyber City that is my favorite, and we have uh, the Desert Terrace, for example, like it to be uh, in, the, in the Grand Canyon. Uh, we have the Quest Dome from the first Oculus Quest. We have this uh, Rekan Retreat, I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's very uh, cool Japanese like uh, place, space station. Uh, very, very sci-fi with a robot cooking and uh, the Winter Lodge. That is pretty cool indeed, uh, also if you like to snowboard or ski. Uh, but yeah, let's go back to Cyber City because this one is my favorite, very similar uh, to Ready Player One. And we also have some mangoes over there, there's not bad at all. Uh, and let's start with the dashboard because this is everything that we're gonna use to control, of course, the Oculus Quest. Uh, pressing the Oculus button over here, uh, we can make it disappear. And so we are just in the environment, we can walk around a little, but of course then the Guardian is gonna tell us, hey, stop, because there is a wall over there. So clicking on the Oculus button, we can uh, open the dashboard. This is the central app. Over here we can see the battery life, the connectivity, the time, uh, our profile, uh, where you click on it, you can click on full profile, and change your avatar and stuff like that. See your applications, your achievement and uh, friends and stuff uh, is a little like window to everything you can do. And over here, instead, uh, we have the, the, let's call it the central app because we have home, store, browser, social and TV with all our applications. Of course, here we have the filter. So if we wanna see just the uh, app that are installed right now, uh, we can just display them or the ones that are not installed and something like it. So uh, that you can browse all your library. Then let's click on home directly because this is again another hub uh, to have everything in front of you with some suggestions directly from Oculus. On the right you have your friends and what they're doing with their scoreboard. Uh, jump back in your game and then we have uh, uh, more from your apps, for example, to discover more applications, entertainment, uh, friends activity, saved and played with other. Uh, it's pretty much all suggestions directly from Oculus to make your experience a little better. Uh, over here though, then we have the store. Uh, the store is like any other store, to be honest, nothing uh, much different to the usual stores. Uh, you have all games. Now you see free because uh, being a content creator, I have those for free so I can show you guys uh, the different games, but uh, just clicking on uh, Solaris, very cool game by the way. Um, you can uh, watch the trailer directly. You can like watch a different uh, capture of the game that's pretty cool then uh, seal the description by or put for example in your wish list uh, you have more info and you also have the review from all people who bought the game uh, you have collection you have top charts uh, you have new releases uh, you have all the different category well it's pretty much a store like all the other and if we go on wish list over here we have our game that we just put on our wish list. I can't uh, show you that, <laughs> but let's keep going uh, with the browser. So interesting thing about the browser is the fact that you can have 
three windows open at the same time. So clicking on the plus over here, that is going to move on the left and then you can have other windows where you can have actually different tabs open. So for example, let's open YouTube again. Let's open another tab with uh, Instagram. I'm pretty sure I'm not uh, in there. By the way, follow me on Instagram. And uh, yeah, you click on YouTube, you have here, then you have another YouTube here and you can have another window over there as well. So three windows, very, very nice for productivity. Uh, let's keep going because that's a browser, works like any browser. Uh, let's get to social. There's another hub where we have like, for example, uh, our chat with people, uh, with our friends. We can see our friends, of course, what they're doing, if they're online or not. Uh, send them an, a party invite. I'm not gonna do it right now. Or you can also block them if, uh, you know, uh, you don't like somebody. Uh, here we have all the requests and then of course all the chat with Eden and stuff and the events. Over there you can see all the events that you are signed up to and uh, yeah, browse them and see if you're interested in something like uh, watch Transformers on big screen beta and many, many other things. So uh, let's keep going with the last part in the central app that is the TV. Over here you have different videos suggested directly from Oculus. Like if we go over here and you click, this is a 180 video. You see <laughs> Oculus uh, logo over here and then we get directly in our video and we can watch it directly. We go back with B and uh, what you find also in the TV part is channels. In the channels you have all the different applications to like watch movies or watch uh, TV or what show like Netflix, uh, Fandango that has a lot of 3D movies, big screen and stuff. So all the apps for multimedia are going to be here. So uh, it's like a central app for that and your media if you of course add things with your storage. Pretty, pretty cool indeed. Let's get to the second part over here that is people. Now uh, with people we have everything that we saw pretty much before but in a smaller form so it's always there and even when you are in a game you can interact with them, invite them and things like that. You see the list also all the friends and you can create your party or add friends directly from here. Uh, pretty, pretty cool. Uh, then we have notification, easy, very easy, the video that you saved. Uh, people that you added as friends, social notification, uh, system if you download something or updates for the system and then we have downloads of course if you download a game. Over here we have the share button, this is very important for me for example but if you want to share your experiences it's going to be very important for you as well because here you can record, just click on it and that's what I'm doing right now, what you're seeing uh, right now and then we have uh, take photo if you want to take a screenshot, go live on Facebook, for example, or cast that you can use to cast directly to a TV that has Chromecast integrated. So uh, it's pretty cool. So you can always share what you're doing in your headset with your friends. And then over here, view all or just click on it to see uh, what you just recorded. Uh, very, very easy. Last section uh, that is settings over here. We already saw that. This is the quick session, uh, quick actions. And uh, it's pretty cool because you know, you have the volume over here, even if you have the volume rocker, as you can see, it changes uh, at the same time. You have the Wi-Fi, and you can set the Guardian system. That can be stationary or room scale. Uh, for that, I'm not gonna be able to show it right now because when you record, you can't really see it through the cameras, but uh, that's how you create your area to then play and know where a wall is gonna be or stuff like that. We have the night display, so you can change the hue uh, of the display. So if you play at night, then you can go to sleep. Pretty cool. Uh, or reset the view and move it around up and down uh, as you want. Do not disturb for the notification, mute microphone and the voice command. Uh, that is kind of a Google, like a, a Google, but this time it's uh, in Oculus directly. Then let's keep going. We have the devices. Again, we do not disturb with microphone, uh, the Wi-Fi that you can select directly from here, your language, privacy, uh, that is important if you want because you can change, uh, let's get into it by the way, you can change a different privacy. So uh, for the activity, just your friends on Oculus can see it and not the friends on Facebook. Uh, for example, how many people can see your friend list, how many people can see your Facebook name. In my case, I said only me because uh, I like privacy, but hey, uh, that really depends on you. And then you can see also the uh, blocked user 
that you have. Then uh, we have the Guardian system. Ooh, uh, this keep disappearing. So you can adjust the Guardian, as we said. Uh, you can set the floor level. Uh, you can change the color of the boundary. Uh, in like yellow, purple and stuff like that, or just clear your history because you can have different guardians around the house and that's pretty cool indeed. Here you can check your device storage, uh, pretty much like Android, right? At the end of the day, this is based on Android. Uh, you have the application with the different permissions and stuff that you have installed. Uh, you have the environment that we already saw and the experimental features uh, like the Bluetooth pairing, uh, better releases, the pass-through shortcut. So you just click two times and you're there and uh, also the developer mode over here if you are a dev. Uh, one thing that we didn't show yet is that if you put down your controllers, like I'm doing right now, uh, that is gonna detect directly your ends and you're gonna have your end tracking ready. And that's pretty cool because you can interact like pinching uh, with everything and go around the software and stuff like that. As you can see, it's super easy and super snappy. At the point, then, uh, well, you have your hands, and uh, if you wanna watch a movie and stuff like that, you don't really need the controller. Pinching in your direction as the start button that can be useful in a game, for example, or in this way, we have the Windows, uh, Windows, <laughs> the Oculus button to open and close our dashboard. So yeah, let's get back. And here you have it guys, this was an overview of the software of the Oculus Quest 2. Of course, that is gonna start to change then in the future. We already had the announcement of the office space, the ability to actually use your PC directly from the Oculus Quest with a Logitech that is gonna even bring a keyboard that you're gonna be able to see directly in VR. And that's super, super interesting. And considering how much experience changed in a year and a half with the original Oculus Quest, I'm really interested to see what's gonna happen the next year and a half with this XR2 processor that is much, much more powerful than its predecessor. But that's my question for you. What feature would you like to see in this software to make it better, easier to use and stuff like that? What would you like to see arriving in the future? You know, maybe Oculus is listening, so let's have a shot. But yeah, I have to say that everything feels really snappy over here with this software and this new processor. And let's remember that it's the same processor that you're finding right now on flagship phones, but here is like $300 and well, you even have controller and stuff like that. And that's even more impressive. But again, let me know what you think about it in the comment below. Down there, there's a giveaway, of course. And as always, if you liked the video, like. If you did like the video, dislike. Subscribe to the channel for more of VR tech. And if you really love the channel, there's a join button down there. And a little further down in the description, we also have the Patreon that really, really helps over here. And down there, we also have the merchandise with t-shirt, sticker, and the mask 2020 item number one. All right, all right. Have a great weekend. And again, like, dislike, subscribe. See you guys next video. Thanks for watching. Ciao.